If you are applying to medical school, there are lots of routes that you can go down to give yourself the best chance of succeeding. In this video, I'm gonna talk about all of these routes and exactly how to kind of navigate them in the best way to give you the best chance of getting into medicine. So let's dive in. So number one is the most common one, which is undergraduate applications. And the course code for that on UCAS is either A100 most of the time, sometimes A106. Now, before we go into it, UCAS is the university and colleges admission service, I believe, and that is the platform for which you apply to medical school. So no matter which way you are going to medical school, this is the platform that you apply through. The only, only circumstance that you don't do that is if you are already in a university, let's say for Sheffield, you're on the biomed course, they have a transfer program that you can apply internally to go from the biomed if you've done a certain, if you basically got a first in the first year, and then you can apply to transfer to the first year of medicine if you pass their interviews, and I think you still have to do the UCAT for most universities that do that. That is the only exception when you're not going to use UCAS. Otherwise, UCAS is the platform and the portal that you will use for all of your med school application. Now, A100 is the bog standard route. So this is usually for people who are applying straight out of secondary school after they've sat their A-levels. And they'll do a five year, if they do an intercalated degree, which is an extra year to do a kind of additional degree in the middle of your med school journey, then you do six years. But typically that is the most common five year course to complete medicine. Another similarity that is shared between all of these applications is that you will have to do the really important five steps to having a successful application. If you don't know what those five steps are, check out this video here where I talk you through all the, basically the key hurdles and the really important things that you need to perform really highly in to do well in your med school application and get through those really competitive ratios of applying. So the second type of applicant is mature applicants. So that's course code A101, A102, or maybe sometimes A109. Now these are people who at the point of starting the course are 21 years old or over. And in this case, you can apply through the mature application route. This is designed for students who may not have taken traditional academic paths, such as those who have worked in healthcare or have caring responsibilities. The application process is similar to the undergraduate route, but may require additional evidence of work experience. Some medical schools have specific requirements for mature applicants, such as the University of Bristol, for example, which requires mature applicants to have completed a degree or equivalent quality. And many medical schools now accept results of access to medicine courses from mature students providing a route to university for students who do not have qualifications beyond GCSE and O level. And actually later in the video we're going to talk about access courses and foundation courses. These access courses are designed to encourage a more diverse range of students into the medical profession. As well as mature students they support students from disadvantaged backgrounds, students from ethnic and cultural minorities and disabled students. Then we have the dreaded graduate applications. So that is a101. Now this is a four-year course for people who already hold a degree. Now some myths to dispel. Graduates can apply to the five-year course but they don't compete with the whole pool of people applying because that would be a bit unfair on the undergraduates who don't have degrees and that much experience to compete with those people. So if you have a degree, you can either apply to the graduate course, the four year graduate entry medicine course, or the undergraduate course. Just know that if you apply to, let's say a course that has 200 students for the undergraduate course, they will probably only allocate maybe 10%, so 20 places to graduates entering the undergraduate course. Now for graduates, there are a lot of things to consider. Firstly, it is the most competitive way to apply 34 applicants to one place and some universities even more so, so really tricky. There's also fees to consider. You can, if you've had a student loan before, you can get a second student loan if you enter the four year course, but not if you enter as a grad on the fifth year course. And in fact, I've got an entire playlist dedicated to tricky gem applications because it is really complex and not straightforward and also very competitive. So you need to make sure that you're nailing all the key aspects of the application. So you can apply if you have a non-science degree as well as a science degree, but what universities you choose are really, really important and you have to make sure that you're picking ones that are suited to your strengths. Now, when you apply, it's exactly the same process. Those five steps that I talked about are that's exactly the same. It's just that you have to make sure that you are a level above because the competition is fierce and they will expect 
high levels of performance in all of those key areas. So with this course, like all medicine courses, you're only allowed to apply to four, except for with grad, you're actually allowed to apply to both Oxford and Cambridge grad entry programs, unlike if you're a school leaver where you're only allowed to apply to one of the Oxbridge universities. Of course, on those grad courses, they are taking a five year course and condensing it into four years. So it is pretty intense. Usually what happens is they take the first two years and condense it into your first year, and then you join what is the third year of the five year cohort, if that makes sense. The next really common one is international applicants. Now, whether you're EU or non-EU, it doesn't really matter anymore. You still have to pay the international fees, which is usually the biggest barrier to entry for a lot of people. Unless you get scholarships, which you can check out where to get them and find out a little bit more about them here, which is very, very rare, I'll be honest. Typically, you're looking at around anything from 15, one five to 50 grand a year to go through that course. Now, again, the same as kind of the grads, if you look at the undergraduate course, they do allocate just a certain proportion to international applicants. Some universities such as UCLan, and there are a few others that are international specific universities and, and basically favor or some in some cases only take international students. Those are great to apply to, but you just need to remember that it is incredibly competitive to apply as an international student, typically around a 6% success rate for applicants. Again, that means that you need to make sure that you're absolutely smashing all those five key areas of the medical application and being in the top decile, if not more, for every aspect to make sure that you get that place. Again, the process is exactly the same. The only thing is that you're going to need a visa and proof of English language competency. So if you are not from an, a native English speaking country, you'll need to do IELTS and get a pretty decent score in that to be eligible to get into medicine. Then an entry route that a lot of people that maybe haven't got conventional grades might consider going down is the access route. So UCAS code 8108 for that. And I'll tell you a little bit about that now. If you don't have the traditional academic qualifications required for medical school, you can apply through the access course route. Access courses provide a route into medicine for mature learners who do not possess the formal qualifications such as A-level, biology, chemistry or equivalent. They are delivered in further education colleges and targeted at those who plan to attend uni after an extended period out of full-time education. It's a one-year course designed to prepare students for higher education. Access courses can help to widen participation in medicine by providing a route for applicants with different experiences and backgrounds to study medicine. Medical courses recognize the important role access courses play in widening participation and are very open to applicants. The application process is similar to the undergraduate route but may require additional evidence of the access course. It's worth noting that some medical schools have specific requirements for access course applicants, such as maybe them achieving over 70% overall and getting a merit in certain modules of that course. For example, the University of Sheffield requires access course applicants to have completed a course that is accredited by the Access to HE Diploma. The Access to HE Diploma specification requires completion of 60 credits, of which 45 credits must be graded at level three. The remaining 15 credits are undergrad and may be at level two or three, although there is an expectation for access to medicine that the great majority of these will be at a level three. It should be made clear to applicants that distinction in all graded units is generally the expected outcome for those who will go on to medical school. So basically there is a minimum requirement for the access course but really they want to see you getting a distinction to really stand out the same way that if you were sitting your A-levels to be of the academic caliber that they want for somebody to go to medical school. So then we have something similar but not to be confused is a foundation course which is UK code A104. Now there are two circumstances under which people may apply to a foundation course. The first is that they did well in their A-levels and got the grades required to get into medical school, but in different subjects than the ones that are required. So basically didn't do biology or chemistry at A-level. Then there's another course for another foundation type of course where people did the right subjects, but maybe didn't quite get the grades that they wanted to. So it's essentially an extra year just to catch up on those subjects. Foundation medicine course are generally for students who don't meet the typical entry requirements for an undergraduate medicine degree, but still demonstrate academic potential. It's just one of the various pathways to medicine that you may want to consider when choosing a medical school. Whereas a typical undergraduate medicine course takes five years to complete, a foundation medicine course includes an extra year, sometimes called a foundation or a gateway year. There are two main types of medicine foundation course. 
There's medicine with a foundation year, a six year course that begins with one year of science-based teaching after which you can join the standard five year undergraduate program. The other is an extended course, which is a six year course with teaching spread out over the six years, which means you'll be taught the basics alongside the more advanced material. The final way, which isn't really an application route so much, it is just one more chance to get in is via clearing. Now, what happens is, of course, everybody applies through UCAS and they get offers. Some people get conditional offers. In fact, most people get conditional offers, which means that maybe, let's say, Bristol University will say, we will offer you a place on the condition that you get an A star in biology, an A in chemistry, and an A in one of the subjects. Maybe, let's say, it's math. So they want AA, A star. And if you get those on A-level results day, then you have your place at medical school. However, what happens a lot of the time, unfortunately, is some people might get I don't know, AAA or A star AB, and that means that they lose that conditional offer. So that means in the summer, especially on A-level results day, that there are a lot of places up for grabs. Now I explain clearing and give you a really useful cheat sheet in this video here that gives you the list of all the universities and where to call to try and get a clearing place. But this is kind of a last ditch Hail Mary attempt to try and get it. But a lot of people are successful if you meet the eligibility criteria, have submitted a good application but just unfortunately didn't get a place that you wanted, but have the A-levels or the degree level that's required. Giving people a call on a clearing day, on results day, is a really good way to do that, especially if you're an A-level school leaver because there will be a lot of places up for grabs on results day. So applicants who are eligible for clearing are those who did not receive any offers, received offers they didn't want to accept, did not meet the conditions of any offers received, or have paid the multiple choice application fee of £26.50, or finally have declined their firm place in their application. So like I say, UCAS is the place to go for all of these applications, so they have a lot of information about clearing. Like I say, you have that video there if you want to look at that. But what I would really recommend to maximize your chances is that you just take all those five elements of the application that you need to stand out in to do well, and just make sure that you put all your effort into those to nail them to stand out from the crowd. Like I say, it's getting more competitive than ever. So if you wanna find out a little bit more about about those five steps, what you need to do, how you can smash them to be really, really stand out. Check out that video here and I hope that that helps you on your journey to applying. So check out that video here and I really hope that it helps you on your journey to applying.